we are using casual words and contractions. We want to choose the right words for the right chat. With casual conversations, we do often use more casual versions of words and contractions as well. For example, very, very useful word, yeah. Instead of yes, yeah is a very common version of that word. And again, if speaking to a stranger in a cafe or on a bus, we might want to use yes instead of yeah, especially if they're more senior to you. We want to show a little bit of respect, then yes might be better. But again, based on your own common sense and the context, you could probably use yeah if you want to. It depends on how you feel about it. Similar to yes, we can use na for no. For example, are you going to John's party tomorrow night? Nah, I think I'm going to stay at home. Speaking of gonna, like I just said, nah, I'm going to stay at home. Gonna, wanna, coulda, dunno, lots of other similar terms. We use these a lot in our casual chats. So all of these words and other similar ones that you may be aware of already. Gonna, going to. Wanna, want to. Coulda, could have, dunno, don't know. These are actually very common in most of our conversations in English, but especially useful for our nice, casual, normal conversations. Friends, family, even strangers as well, we just use these. They're a quicker way of saying many words and phrases. In a similar way, of course, we also have our contractions. It's, let's, he's, I've, can't, don't, whatever it might be, contractions are useful for all conversations. Whether they're casual conversations with friends, a nice chat with a stranger on a train, talking with your colleagues at work, giving a presentation at work to important clients, really, contractions are fine for every conversation. Most of them, like these normal ones, they are not considered to be too informal or too casual. In fact, a very normal, natural part of the day-to-day -day English language. They make it quicker and easier to speak it. So think about using those whenever you're talking, in fact. Some useful vocabulary here as well before we move on. Versions, contractions, and similar. So we'll move over to slide seven, where we'll be talking about tangents. Bit of a tricky word, but it's quite useful here to look at our picture, our signposts, tangents, kind of a things going off in different directions. So, first of all, let me mention that indeed, as it says here, conversations are flexible. They're not rigid, they're quite flexible. So a tangent in a conversation is a different line of thought, different line of thought. It can also be a different line of thought which relates to something which has already been said. Let's go through some useful phrases related to these ideas. For example, that reminds me, while I remember, and before I forget, they can all be used to move into a new tangent. Again, normally based on what has already been said. So for example, if somebody says, are you going to John's party tomorrow night? And I say, no, but that reminds me, I'm having a party next week, do you want to come? So someone brought up John's party, and I remembered that that relates to something else I want to talk about, which is that my party is happening next week. It doesn't have to be too related, it can just remind you of something unrelated, but you want to say it while you still remember, while it's still in your mind, before we forget. And very similar to these, Speaking of, or speaking of blah, 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 or speaking of which, they're great for bringing up something related to what, again, has just been said. And we'll come back to that in just a moment because it relates very nicely to this last point. Try to allow a chat to move smoothly from one topic to the next, and then the next, and then the next. So let's relate these last two points together. Let's imagine a movement from one topic to another. One person says, I'm going to take my kids to the park tomorrow. Should be a nice sunny day. 
I could say, oh yeah, I know that park. I think they are planning to expand it. They want to make it bigger. The other person says, yeah, that's right. I think the local government are planning an expansion. And then I say, yeah, well, I don't actually have much confidence in the local government since that event last year. And then the other person says something else about the local government or that event last year I just mentioned. And the conversation moves from one thing to the next. Talking about taking the kids to the park. I talk about a possible expansion of the park. They talk about the local government. I say something else about the local government. And the conversation moves from one thing to the next quite naturally. Okay, some vocabulary here before we move on. Tangent relates to and moves smoothly. So we will go on to slide eight, catching up. Hopefully an idea with which you guys are already quite familiar. Have you not seen the other person in a while, the other person in the conversation? So catching up or a catch up as a noun, it's a very common form of casual conversation. So use phrases like, what have you been up to? How have you been? It's been ages and it's great to catch up with you. They're nice, friendly, natural. And again, a lot of those are questions. So they allow us to get a conversation going. Of course, we can also ask about specific events, a specific events that have happened since we last saw them, events that we know about or have heard about. For example, how was your sister's birthday? Because we know since we last saw that person, their sister had a birthday. How was your sister's birthday? Or did you have a good vacation? Because we know they've been away on vacation. And again, think about your follow-up questions. Did you have a good vacation? Yes, it was lovely. Where did you go? Oh, I went to Greece. How was it? What was the weather like? Tell me about the food there. And we'll talk a little bit more about that kind of idea on the next slide as well. But for now, that's a good place to start. And as well as asking about the other person, it's also useful to update them about your own life. Tell them what's been happening with you since they last saw you. Any important events. For example, I got engaged recently or I'm organizing a trip to Paris next month and so on. Anything that's new and relevant. And hopefully, they will also ask questions to you and help to get that conversation moving. Some vocabulary here before we move on then. Catch up, specific events and update. In which case, we will move on again to our penultimate slide, second to last slide. Really important here, I think, relating your own experiences. How do you add to the topic? Well, when having a chat, you might be able to relate your own experiences or knowledge to the topic at hand. A nice simple example. If someone mentions that they're going to a restaurant that you've been to before, you could say how you enjoyed eating there or what dish was your favorite. Did you think it was expensive, affordable or cheap? So you've been to that restaurant, you have that experience, relate that experience to the conversation and add any extra knowledge which helps to make that topic a bit bigger and more worth talking about. The same is true for places you've been to, activities you've done. For example, in our pictures over here, traveling, backpacking, whatever it might be. Let's say in the previous page, we talked about someone who's just been on vacation to Greece. If you've been to Greece, you can relate that experience and that knowledge to the topic. Oh, I've been to Greece as well. Which part did you go to? Did you go to the south? There's a lovely island there. They've got great restaurants, blah, blah, blah. Bring your own experience to it. You know, other things as well, concerts, crazy things like skydiving, road trips, anything that you can relate to, you've done, or that you have knowledge about, do add that into the conversation. One thing to be careful of though, is to not hijack the conversation. 
So if someone mentions again that they've been to Greece, of course, do add your own experience if you've been there before, but then don't steal the conversation. Don't keep talking yourself about it if the other person wanted to continue. So simply add your own element and allow the other person to continue if they want to. It might be natural for them to say, I went to blah, 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 I did X, Y, Z, and then you say, oh yes, I've done that before, and then keep talking. You'll normally find that from conversation to conversation, based on the context, sometimes it's best to let the other person continue or to continue yourself. Now, what do we do if we don't have our own experience or knowledge to relate, to add to the conversation? Well, again, we can use our best friend's questions. So if you don't have a relatable experience, then just ask about theirs. So if you haven't been to Greece and the other person is telling you about their vacation to Greece, if you've never been there, ask about it. Like we mentioned on the previous slide, what was the weather like? What are the people like? What can you tell me about the food there? Again, questions are our great friends when it comes to conversations. Let's finish this page with a quick review of our vocabulary. Experiences, knowledge, at hand, hijack, and relatable. So we'll finish off with our last slide, which is of course a summary. So let's just recap. Conversations are flexible, and fluid. Allow topics to flow from one to the next to the next. Don't worry too much. Don't overthink things. Just try to simply feel for what tone is most suitable and just which words work best. As I say, don't really worry about it. The more you do it as well, the more natural it will become to you. Being a good conversationalist being a good conversationalist means listening and responding appropriately. Don't just wait for your turn to talk. Sadly, we all probably know at least one person like this when you're talking to them. They're not really listening to you. They're simply waiting for you to finish talking and then they can talk. They're just waiting for their turn. Don't be that person. It's not good for nice conversation. Also, as we've mentioned many times, I think it's such an important point, ask questions to get our conversation going and to keep it moving as well. Like I said earlier, not just questions, but follow-up questions. Then we can really expand on a topic. And lastly, what like we just discussed before, bring your own experiences and knowledge to the conversation. And if you can't, just return to questions. Let's review the vocabulary from this page. Flexible, fluid, flow, overthink, and conversationalist. So all that leaves me to say is thanks for watching. Thank you so much for uh, paying attention here. Hopefully you've learned a lot. And of course, more importantly, have fun practicing your conversations. Thanks again, and hopefully I'll see you all soon in the next presentation. Until next time, I'll say goodbye and take care, everybody. Thank you for watching.